Hello dear students, welcome to the fifth heading in under the topic some basic concepts in organic chemistry. In this particular heading we are talk, going to talk about mesomeric effect. In other videos we have already dealt with inductive effect, electromeric effect, resonance, hyperconjugation. This is the fifth effect which comes into play when we talk about organic compounds and their behavior under different reaction conditions. Mesomeric. It's a combination actually of inductive effect and electromeric effect. It is also called as a resonance effect because this is the main effect behind the behavior of uh, organic compounds to undergo resonance. If you notice over here, mesomeric effect is something which involves pi electrons or pi electrons and lone pair of electrons. Pi electrons involving pi electrons is a characteristic of uh, electromeric effect. But electromeric effect is a temporary effect. That means which comes into effect only when an organic reagent is around. Whereas mesomeric effect is a permanent effect like inductive effect. In other words, it's an inherent property of the molecule or the ion. It doesn't wait for a reagent to come in order to show this behavior. It's a behavior which is there in the molecule due to the presence of conjugated system of pi electrons or an interaction between pi electrons and lone pair of electrons. You will notice that it is transmitted along a chain just like inductive effect. And as I mentioned earlier, it is a property or it is a behavior which is very, very important in conjugated compounds. How does it take place? What does it involve? I'll slowly go through it. Because these structures that we draw, these the canonical structures that we draw, these are actually very confusing and to be honest, for a first time student, you're not, you're not able to get your way around as to how to draw these structures. So I'll give you tricks also to do that. First of all, let's try and understand. We have taken an example of phenol over here. C6H5OH. Oxygen has lone pair of electrons on it. OH group. It has a tendency to withdraw electrons as well as it has a tendency to share its lone pair of electrons. In this case, the, the lone pair of electrons is shared with the system of electrons, with the pi system of electrons in the benzene ring. So what happens over here is the CO single bond converts to a double bond. Carbon here, if you notice, first is O, there's a double bond. This was how it was originally carbon at number one when the co bond turns to a double bond now it's one two three four and five carbon cannot show penta valency its maximum valency is four tetravalent carbon so it has to give up one bond so what happens is there's either the possibility that it returns the electron or the other possibility is that one of these double bonds changes to a single bond so the carbon, the pi electron cloud is withdrawn by the carbon number 2 over here. So we'll name it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 for the sake of clarity. So our carbon number 2 now acquires a negative charge and the other two bonds, they are remaining unaffected. Now. This carbon in order to satisfy itself, either it resorts to forming a double bond, how it was in the structure one, or the other possibility is this electron pair is used up in forming a double bond between carbon number two and three. With the result, carbon number four has to take away the pi electron uh, pair. So our carbon number 4 acquires a negative charge whereas a double bond is formed between carbon number 2 and 3. OH in the process still has the positive charge and one lone pair of electrons. Carbon number 4 with a negative charge. Again two possibilities. Either it reverts to how it was. That is structure number 2. 
or what it does is it forms a double bond with carbon number 5 with the result this double bond is now taken up by carbon number 6 so it acquires a negative charge a very easy way this is how you understand so what what is happening over here that is mesomeric or resonance effect you will ask what is the difference between resonance and this not much different actually it is the mesomeric effect which leads to resonance and that is why we are calling it as resonance effect but in resonance we don't talk about plus resonance effect and minus resonance effect it's just resonance phenomenon as in on its own here we are talking about two types of groups the example that we have discussed over here just now here the group or the atom is actually releasing electrons towards giving to the benzene ring that means it's a plus r or a plus m effect because the group itself is acquiring a positive charge so this is an example where the lone pair of electrons are interacting with a pi electron cloud again alternate double and single bonds if you want to draw it very simple what do you do is of course you have drawn this is your original phenol next draw three structures remove the first double bond one two and three these are hydrogens so in the first structure put negative charge here second structure put negative charge here third structure put negative charge over here these two can't form a double bond double single double again these two can't form a double bond so double double this can't form a double bond these two so we are left with double single double as simple as that and rest you can attach OH uh, groups like which will release electrons towards the benzene ring you have OR you have SH so these kind of groups they release electrons towards the benzene ring they're called plus R or plus M effect groups let's take a second example over here again we have a combination of C H and O taken the example of benzaldehyde over here C H O C and O are bonded by pi electron, pi bond. In other words, there's a double bond between the carbon and the oxygen. Oxygen being more electronegative has a tendency to withdraw electrons from the carbon. Now this carbon, one, two, three, this oxygen has taken up electrons, so it's negative. Now this carbon is left with only three bonds. It's tetravalent, it needs electrons. Where does it get it from? Two possibility. Either it takes back the electron which oxygen has taken, in which case we are back to where we started from. The other possibility is it withdraws electrons from the benzene ring. Now it's much easier to withdraw electrons from the pi electron cloud. So it acquires a double bond. In other words, this carbon number two now. So we again number it as one, two, three, four five and six now our carbon number two is actually short of electrons so it requires a positive charge it's it's restless now it needs a pair it's short of electrons so either it takes back its electron play, pair in which case again we are back to structure one or it withdraws electrons from the adjacent pi bond with the result what we have is we'll have a double bond here this double bond remains completely untouched with the result our carbon number four now has a positive charge this carbon number four is now restless it needs to pair up it needs electrons so what does it do either it takes back pulls the electron from carbon number two and three in which case it is like structure number two alternately it pulls electrons from the pi bond between carbon number 5 and 6. 
When it does that, our carbon number 6, now 5 is very happy because it is getting a chance to form a bond either with 6 or with 4. It doesn't affect it because this remains satisfied. It's carbon number 6 which now acquires a positive charge. So we again have the canonical structures wherein the benzene ring overall gets a partial positive charge whereas the oxygen in this gets a partial sorry gets a negative charge here the atom or the group is actually withdrawing electrons it's taking away electrons hence it's a minus m or a minus r effect just like addition and subtraction so it's giving electrons to the benzene ring so plus r it's taking away so minus r again in order to draw the canonical structures draw three structures here one two three this method is just to make it easier for you if you're a first timer you've not understood how to draw and it's quite intriguing and it's quite confusing it's just to help you that it doesn't uh, this the explanation still remains the same so again what do you do is one two three one two three one two three now keep removing one one bond so we have over here the carbon positive over here remove this second one bond and this comes the fourth carbon acquires a positive charge now the two carbons adjacent to it can't form a pi bond with it so what we are left with is again leave these two alternate double Again, come here, remove this from here. We have a positive charge over here. One, two. It doesn't, it can, cannot form a bond. So what do we have over here is the double bond shifts in place. So we have a double, a double over here. That is how we make the canonical structures. And of course, whatever group is there remains with a negative charge. Hope this makes the concept a bit more clearer mesomeric effect if you want some written material to support this video please visit the google site learning chemistry is fun it's a completely free site we've developed it to help students to make chemistry a bit more easier because when i was a student i found it quite confusing and quite intriguing to understand all these concepts so it's just a humble attempt to make the concept a bit more easier do let us know your feedback and we shall continue adding more videos to it have a good time thank you for watching